This week, we'll be talking about Purim. Just before we even start, there's a debate about this Thursday is going to be Tanit still. There's a debate, why are we fasting and when are we fasting? So we're going to learn it. Um, there's two opinions. Some say, okay, let's do it the easy way. The fast actually happened a year before Purim. The fast that you hear in the Megillah, three days and three nights, happened in Nisan. It, it happened to such a state that when, when Mordechai told Esther that we were going to go to the king, she says, I'm going to go on a fast. And I'm going to go fast for three days. And not only I fast, everybody should fast. And the fast was actually during Pesach. Actually fell on Pesach. So Mordechai told her, what are you crazy? Fast is fast, tannis is tannis, one thing, but nobody, if you want to fast, you can fast, but nobody's going to eat matzah? Honest, let us say them? That can, that's impossible, we're not going to do that. And she says, you, you, you want me to go to the king? We're going to fast for three days and three nights. And it was good. Yeah, that, that's right. So it, it was actually, very good. So the, actually the fast, according to that, was on Pesach. And in Tani says still, the, the, the thing that says in the Megiddo that she fasted for three days before going to the king, she was the only one who fasted. Why? Because on Purim, everybody was fighting. And you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to fast when you fight. She was the only one who wasn't fighting, so she's the only one who's fasting, and that's why it was called Tani Sesto. Right? So the, the, the just, the, just for our understanding of what's going to be here. Another thing that we need to understand is that there was a pro, the, the, the Jews knew that they're going to come back. The, when was Purim? Purim was in between the first temple and the second temple. The Jews knew, but the prophets, Yirmiya, already told them that the exile is going to be only for seven years. And after seven years, they're going to come back. The problem is they didn't know, I mean, the, Jew, the Jews did know, but the other kings did not know when do we start the 70 years. So some of them started counting the 70 years earlier than they were supposed to. And also, Achashverosh counted earlier than he was supposed to. And it happened to be that on the feast that he happened to be, he took out all the vessels from the base of Mikdash. And that's what it was. So we're going to, after knowing this background, we're going to start. Source number one, this is from Talmud Megillah. Sha'alu Talmida vet Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. The students of Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai asked him a question. What was the question? Mipnei manit chayvu sonehem shisrael shebota dor kliya. Why were the Jews of the generation sentenced to destruction? You noticed it says sonehem shisrael because it doesn't want to say Jews, but it means Jews. Yeah, yeah. It, it says haters of Israel because you don't want to say Jews, but. It actually means, it says, what was the reason that they were supposed to get killed? What did they do wrong? So this is what they asked Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So who Amar Lahem? So he said to them, Imru He says, what do you think? He says, Imru let me, let me hear what you think. Let me hear what your thoughts are. Yeah? So Amrulo, so they told him, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what we think. They told him why? It's because they enjoyed Achashverosh's feast. That's why. Because they didn't enjoy it from the feast. So he didn't like it. He didn't like this answer. He says, I don't understand what you are saying, he says. So he says, Imken, if this is so, like you says, Shebeshushan Yergu, those people who enjoyed it, they should be killed. But why all the others, all the other Jews are getting killed? That doesn't make sense. Because I don't, I don't, there's something missing. There's something missing in your explanation. Because the people in Shushan went to the... Exactly. Not the other people. Exactly. So they should be killed, they're not the other ones. So let's see. Hachet sheba'ana'a misu'udato shel oto rasha. So most of the commentaries are trying to understand this. And it says... What is the sin of enjoyment, enjoyment of that feast? So he says, you see some commentaries try to say, Bepashtut, 
in the simple meaning, הוא אכילת מאכלות אסורות. They ate shrimp, they ate uh, all this, uh, seafood, yeah? וכפי שמובא במדרש, just like it's brought down in the midrash, שבני ישראל, that the Jewish people, it says, and even if you, do, you want to say that they didn't eat shrimp, they didn't eat past Israel. The bread was made not past Israel, even that's, that's good enough reason. Bausak besakana, they endangered themselves, al she'achlu mitavshi lagoim, that they ate from the non-Jewish foods, whether it was completely not kosher or uh, semi-not kosher. And this is uh, what most of the commentary says, the reason why there was a decree. And the question on this is obvious. It says, when did you see that eating non-kosher food is so strict that when you see that the punishment for eating non-kosher food is the destruction of the entire nation? No, 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 there's no such concept. Where do you invent such a concept? So that's the... והקשו על תם זה רק, and they said, למה יהרגו שבכל העולם כולו? And still, if you're going to say this is the reason, so the guys who ate, they should be killed. You know? They got, you ate non-kosher food, you ate non-pass Israel, maybe you should be killed, I won't argue. First of all, you shouldn't be killed. But second of all, even if you want to say killed, they did kill, what? The entire 99% of the rest of the country, what did they do wrong? היינו שבנוגע ליהודים אלו ששושן עצמם מודים שהם ראויים לכליאה. In other words, if you want to say that the people of in Shushan ate for forbidden foods, I'll give it to you. Even though, even that doesn't make sense. Right. Even that does, doesn't make sense. But you know what, I'll give it to you. But what about the rest of the world? You, the exactly. What is this? Where do we see such a thing? Okay. So let's continue and see if that's actually what happened. וגם לכאורה... דוחה קצת לפרש, and also it is very hard to explain it this way, לאכילת מאכלות אסורות, that they actually ate non-kosher foods, שהרי חכמנו ז"ל, it says in the מגילה itself, what does it says? שהמשתה היה כרצון, איש ואיש, that the feast was according to every man, you want to eat shrimp, there was a shrimp section, you want to eat kosher food, there was a hundred percent kosher food section with badats. But that's Mordechai. Mordechai gave the Hechshel. Nothing better. Vegan, yeah. Vegan. yeah, whatever you wanted. Keratzon Mordechai v'Haman. Just like it says, like the will of Mordechai and the will of Haman. V'chen mefurash b'midrash al ha-pasuk. And also the verse itself, the midrash it says, says on the, on the verse, v'hashtiya kedat enones. And it says that the drinking was without any force. What does it say about the drinking wasn't any force? In other words, there was kosher wine, and there was non-kosher wine, and nobody forced you to drink the non-kosher wines. So in the feast of Achashverosh, there were both kosher food and non-kosher food. ואם כוונת הגמרא היא שבכל זאת אכלו בני ישראל מאכלות אסורים, and if what the Gamora wants to say that nevertheless the Jewish people ate forbidden, food, forbidden foods, לא היה על הגמרא לסתום לה לפרש. Instead of saying נהנו, they enjoyed the feast, they should have said they ate non-kosher food. It looks like that wasn't a problem. Right. The yeah. problem wasn't that they ate non-kosher. Maybe some of them did. But that wasn't the problem. What was the problem? The enjoyment of the, of the feast. Okay. Source number three. Page number two. En ones, Amar Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Elazar says, Melamed, when it says there no, was no coercion at the feast, Rabbi Elazar explains, Melamed shalokol v'echad v'echad, hishkeu miyen bidinato. Each one got his own wine. Lasot kiretzon ish v'ish. In other words, Everything was set up, you wanted kosher, you got kosher. Amar Rabba, la'asot kirtzon Mordechai v'haman. If you wanted to be in the section of Mordechai, you got the section of Mordechai, the, the greatest kashrus. And if you want to be in the section of Haman, you want to eat some pig, go over there. Mordechai dekhtiv, because it's written, ish Yehudi, and then 
about Mordechai, he says a Jewish man, and about Amman, he says Ish Tsar Ve'oyev. It was the enemy, the Tumenu. And Rashi explains this, if you look at Megillah, Rashi explains that there were two bartenders in the thing. Who were the two bartenders? Keratzon Mordechai Ve'aman. Hem ayu sarei amashkim b'mishte. In other words, Mordechai was running around with kosher wine, and if somebody, God forbid, a Jew, he sees running around to the wrong section, he says, like, I have good wine for you. And he used to give him the kosher wine. How is it could be? Mordechai told him, don't go there. It looks like Mordechai did, according to the Midrash. Mordechai was there, he gave the kashrus, was the barman, and so on and so forth. Yeah. The Rebbe. So, Still, we are not sure why it was the decree to annihilate all the Jews. So we're going to continue on page number three. Yesh mefarshim, there are those who explains, shemekivan shemishte ze asar chashverosh al bitul binyan hamikdash. Because this was the time that the chashverosh thought the Jewish people are never going to go back to Israel because the 70 years already passed. And now he, he was afraid to take the vessels and use them until now. Because whoever used the vessel in the last 70 years died. So he says, ah, now the 70 years is over. The Jewish people, it doesn't look like they're going back. The prophecy is not true. Therefore, I don't have to worry about it. And now he's taking all the vessels off the temple and he's bringing it to that feast. Like it is explained in the Gemara, According to the calculation of Achashverosh, the 70 years of exile are already done. And the conclusion is that there's no salvation for the Jewish people. The second temple is not there. Say, now for sure, that's it. There's not going to be salvation for them. They're going to stay here. They're stuck with me. And therefore, he's not worried that he's going to die. And what did he do? Hotziet. At Klea Mikdash Lishtamesh Bahem, he took out all the vessels of the temple to use them. Im Ken, so therefore, now we're going into a deep reason. So when the people came to the feast, what did they do? Kol Mishenehna Moto Suda, anybody who is showed, he enjoyed that feast. What is he enjoying? He's enjoying the fact that Yerushalayim is not getting rebuilt. That's what the symbolism is. Hu Yoresh Yusameach Al Chorban Mikdash. He shows that he is happy on the destruction of the temple because all the vessels from the temple are there. But the Rebbe doesn't like that either. He says, But it still is problematic. It says, even if you want to say that, still the decree should be on whom? On the people who enjoyed the feast. You're talking about 5,000 people, 10,000 people feast. What about the other 10 million? What, what did they do? They didn't even come. Why do you want to kill them? Exactly. We're talking about the decree to kill each and every Jew in the world. It includes babies. Just like the Megillah Esther says, that the decree of a man was on the entire nation. Minar ve'adzaken, from boy to old, taf ve'nashim, babies and women. Vim ken, meile. So if you want to say, you know what, those who go, who went and showed that they are happy about the destruction should die, I'll, I'll give it to you, maybe they should die. Im itchayvu bo'onesh kliya, mipnei shishtachavu l'atzelem, and maybe they bow down in front of a man, he had uh, an idol on his neck, okay. K'mo shekatvu b'mafarshim, and that I can kind of understand. What's the understanding? When somebody is doing idol worship, it makes sense that God says, I should annihilate everybody. How do we know this? We know this from the golden calf. In the golden calf, after they did the sin, God wanted to destroy them. That God wanted to kill them. That I understand. If it's idol worship, it's one thing. But over here, it's not even idol worship. What did they do? They did, symbolically, they showed that they're happy about the destruction of the temple. But over here, what are you going to say? The guy ate pizza? 
because he ate pizza, I'm going to kill him? How, how does that mean? Okay, so he, show, so he showed that he's enjoying the, the, the destruction of the temple. That it still is not good enough even to kill him. Forget about the rest of the people. Avodah Zarah makes sense. If you say they bow down to the idol, I'll give it to you. But over here you're saying it's because they enjoyed the meal. They, they say, oh, this pizza is good. Because of that, the death penalty. Okay, they were low lives. They showed that they, uh, sh- that they enjoyed the destruction of the temple. But it's not, it doesn't deserve a death penalty. Has to be some uh, connection. And especially if you want to kill them, that's one thing. But over here you kill 10 million people that weren't there, that didn't do anything wrong. What about them? So the whole thing doesn't make sense. So let's continue. So in order to understand that, we are on page four, we need to understand the entire relationship between God and the Jewish nation. Once we understand the relationship between God and the Jewish nation, we're going to understand what's going on over here. You know what, before we even start, no, we do it inside. We have to explain this according to the, what the sages taught us. It says the Jewish people, there's an analogy of the Jewish people that they are one sheep, we are one nation, one sheep, amongst 70 wolves. Throughout history, that's the way we were. We are amongst 70 wolves and one sheep. And everybody wants to kill us. From the Roman Empire, the Greek, the Russians, today, even half of America. Say, free, free Palestine. Kill the Jews. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Nothing changed. Kill the it says, but how fortunate we are that we have somebody to rely on. Who can we rely on? God. Gadol HaRo'e HaKadosh Bechu Shematzila Veshomra But God protected us all these years. Not Tzahal. Yeah, God does. Ve'hainu, that means she'himatzutam shel Yisrael ben haumot that the fact that the Jewish people were for the last 2,000 years amongst the nations hilifamim be'ofen she'kiyumam unisi It is the only reason we still exist today, that's a miracle. God intervenes. Lemala minateva. He comes above nature and he intervenes. Bedome le kivsa, umeret beshvim zevim. Just like a sheep that is standing among 70 wolves. She'en makom betiva le giyuma. Imagine a herd of 70 wolves and one sheep. And nobody's eating the sheep. It's a miracle. Everybody's going to skim. Look, that's a miracle. Obviously, God is the shepherd standing right over there and doesn't let the wolves eat them. So God, God through miracles, protect his Jewish nation. But when does that work? Oh, we'll see. So it should, it should always work. It should always work. When does that work? that God protects the Jewish people, and the 70 wolves don't eat her, when? When they know that God is protecting them. What does it mean? They don't rely on Trump. They don't rely on Biden. They don't rely on America. They don't rely on the UN. They don't rely on anybody. They know their dependency is in God. They trust in God that he will protect them. Not on nature, not on their sevi, not on Sahal. If they trust on Sahal, we're going to see what happens. But once the Jewish people comes to God and they say, God, you know what, God? We've got everything under control. Just don't get involved. In other words, we push God away. He says, look, we have good connections with Biden. We have good connection with America. We don't need you. We don't need you, God. Just don't get involved, please. Don't get involved. Like nature in business. Don't get involved. 
על ידי שמחשיבים. It says, what did they think? What did the Jews think at the time? You know who's protecting us? Well, it wasn't God. Who's the one who's protecting them? Chashverosh. He's our friend. We have people in high position. Jews in high position in America. They're going to protect us. Like Shumar. Yeah, he's going to protect us. Shumar is going to protect the Jewish nation. We can trust him. We have some guys who are going to work for us in the thing. They think that the, it, they get the protection from nature. They get the protection from the wolves. From the wolves, that's their protection. So what do they say? They, in their own behavior, are telling God, God, we don't need you. We have a Hashverosh, we have Mordechai, we have Esther, we're good. Just don't get involved, everything is going to be good. Or like in business, sometimes we tell God, God, everything is falling in line. You know, the customer is coming, he saw the house, he loves it. God, if you don't get involved, he's going to buy it. Just don't get involved, God. <laughs> don't make trouble, that's right. That's what we tell God. Don't make trouble. You know the feeling. We all have it. You know. In other words, you tell, we tell God, we don't need you. Sorry, don't get involved, please. Stay out of it. And they put themselves under the rulership of nature, or under the rulership of the wolves. Page 5. And just to, to understand this, this is what the Rambam says when it comes to the laws of fasting. What does he say? Beperush Mashenemar explaining the verse. There's a verse that says, "Vehalachti mi mi bekeri." It says, "If you walk with me, bekeri." Bekeri means indifferent. In other words, you're not the boss. I'm good. I'm. I, I, yeah, I'm going to separate you from, from, from us. God, don't get involved. So God says, when you have the attitude that you don't need me, you don't need me. In other words, you have the ability, you have the free choice, whether I'll be in your life or whether I don't be in your life. You want nature? I'll give you nature. You want God? I'll give you God. It's up to you. And if you want nature... Here you go. So that's what he says. You want nature? Allah me bekeri. You don't want me to get involved? You told me stay out? I'm going to listen to you. Whatever you guys want. In other words, it's not a punishment. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm giving you, I, I love you to such a degree, God says, whatever you decide. Even if you decide bad, I'll let you decide bad. It's up to you. You're the one who's going to decide. Klomar. And the Rambam takes it a step further. He goes even deeper. He says, when bad things happen in someone's life, there's two things that he can do. He can either know it's from God, or he can say, hey, it's nature. It's part of nature. You have to live with it. You know, something bad, sometimes bad things happen because of nature. Yeah. You know, things bad. What, nothing bad ever happens? Bad things are there. There's accidents, there's things. Nature works. <laughs> Right? So if I give you signs that something is wrong and you telling me back, oh, it's nature. I'm going to continue giving you nature until you realize it's me. This is what God says. Klomar, when I'm going, this is what it means. Kshavya lechem tsara kedesh etashuvu, I try to show you the right way. I'm going to give you trouble. Why? So you can repent. Im tomrushi keri. In other words, now you have a choice. To say this is from God, I'll better shape up, or to say, you know, it's part of life, people die. What can we do? October, October 7th, October 7th? Okay. October 7th happens. It happens because, I don't know, the guys didn't know what they were doing over there. It happens. You know, it happens. That's right. Things happen, bad things happen. It's not nothing to do with God. It just happened. Happened, nikret, v'lashon keri. It just happened. Osif lachem chamat oto keri. It says, now I'm going to add my anger to that thing. It's not going to be... So if you have that attitude, then you're being indifferent. Oh, you're going to bring me staying out... You want me out of the picture? Even when I show you signs, you still want me out of the pictures? So I'll stay out of the pictures until you realize that you need me. 
שאין רצונו לומר שהקדוש ברוך הוא מוסיף בעונש וצרה. Because of the indifference, God says, oh, you didn't get the message, so I have to add until you would get the message. אלא שאז הנהגת הקדוש ברוך הוא כלפי האיש שהוא בפשוט קורא. It's not that God increases it. God forbid, God doesn't increase it. God listens to you. He says, it's not me, you still want me out, I'll still be out. When it's going to hurt a lot, when you don't want me out, I'll come back in. But it's not a punishment, it's a consequence. Think about that war. A war, the captain says to all the soldiers, you know, guys, wear your helmet. Wear your helmet. If you don't wear your helmet, there's bullets flying around. And this one guy decided he's not going to wear the helmet. He takes the protection off. And as soon as he gets, takes the protection off, he gets a, a bullet. It's a punishment. No. It's not a punishment. The, God gave you everything. You said, I don't want it. Here, I don't need this protection. So that's what happens when you don't need the protection. Same thing as you. Klapei ha'ishu. שמסולקת ממנו השגחתו יתברך המיוחד, ובדרך כלל נשאר מופקר למקרה. So once you take the helmet off, don't, what do you, it's not a punishment, it's a consequence of your action. אוקיי. Okay. So let's look at source number four. ודבר זה, and this is, this is in משנה תורה, laws of fasting, we didn't get to that yet. Next, next one I think is Tanis. We're going to learn this. מדרכי התשובה הוא, it says, what does תשובה mean? שבזמן שתבוא צרה, let's say there's no rain in Israel, it's a year of famine, there's no rains, so what do you do? ויזעקו עליה ויריעו, you have to make noise, you have to sound the trumpets, why do you have to make noise and sound the trumpets? Don't say, ah, it happens, some years are bad, some years are good, like in business. You know, this month was bad, this month was good. If it's a bad month, it means God was involved. It, it means God is directly involved in the bad month. Don't say to yourself, ah, this is nature. This is not, no, God gives. God's supposed to give every month and a lot of money. And when we say, God, ah, it happens. So you're taking the protection off. So that's why you need to shout. It's a bad month. What do you do? You come to shul and you say to God, God, what's going on over here? I know maybe I don't deserve it, but a little bit. Panasa, I'm required Jewish law to ask, like a, like a son, ask for a father. So I'm asking you, last month wasn't good. If you don't feel the need to ask God last night wasn't good, there's a problem. In other words, you, in other words you're saying, Ah, it's nature, it's ups and down, and uh, I can rely on my uh, savvy, and I'll have a connection over there. This Achashverosh I'll rely on, or this Mordechai I'll rely on, or this Esther I'll rely on. That's the idea. When, when things are, when, when you plan or when you wish, it's a, it's a, it's a, you should take notice to reevaluate your relationship with uh, Hashem? Not only take t- notice, it comes directly from God. It's because you're taking away God's protection. That's why it's not good. God's always give. God is always good. God is always protecting the sheep from the 70 wolves. The 70 wolves should never start eating the sheep. And once it's going bad, you see the 70 wolves are getting hungry, you better go to God. And if you don't go to God, you go to that big bad wolf. You say, I better have a connection with this big bad wolf. He's going to protect me from the other wolves. That's where the problem starts. <laughs> now you understand where the problem starts? ידעו הכל שבגלל מעשיהם הרעים הוא רע להם ככתוב. In other words, they know, I'll better shape up. The reason why it's not good, maybe I don't have God in my life. אבונותיכם יטו, their sins moved it away. וזהו שיגרו להם להסיר הצרה מעליהם. This is what going to cause them to remove the, uh, the difficulty away. אבל אם לא יזעקו ולא יריעו, but if they're not going to come and complain to God, What does it show when you don't complain to God? It shows that you don't think he's in control. A person who don't, who, for example, he had a terrible month and he doesn't come to complain to God. You know what he shows? He doesn't believe that God gives it to him. He knows, ah, you know how, why I'm making the money? I'm smart, I have a connection. This guy gives it to me. That power of nature gives it to me. This power of nature gives it to me. It's not God who's giving it to me. Yeah. Oh, it's this one, it's a hash verosh. It's, it's because I work hard, it's because I, oh, that's what's giving it to me. Exactly. More days, more 
אלה יאמרו דבר זה ממנהג העולם. This is the nature of the world. If I'll be smart with the nature of the world, I'll gain it. If I won't be smart, I won't work according to the nature of the work. Of, I need to, to work smarter. I need to work harder. Then I'm going to make it. Era lanu vetsara zo nikret. But and if it doesn't succeed, it says, you know what? Sometimes it happens. Not every endeavor. So, because you don't realize that God is running the show. Harei zo derech zariyut. Such a thing to say, eh, the guy died. It just happens. It's just nature. Nothing to do with God. This is cruelty. וגורמת להם להידבק במעשיהם הרבים. And it calls them to, to, to stick to the bad ways. ותוסיף הצהרה הצהרות אחרות. And then that's going to continue and become, become a chain of bad events, one after another. הוא שכתוב הלכתי מבקרי, and this is what it's written, if you're going to say I'm not involved, it says then I'm really not going to be involved, not because it's a punishment. You don't want. Because you don't want. Yeah. You're pushing me away. I want to be involved. You're pushing me away. And why, is, in other words, why the difficulty comes? So the, I gave you a difficulty, so you're going to come and you're going to complain to me. Hey, God, what's going on? In other words, you realize it's all for me. And when you still say, ah, I'm still not involved, so I'm still not involved. Until you say, you want me in your life, I will not be in your life. In other words, God says, God is like a Lubavitcher. He says, I'm not going to push myself in. You want to invite me in? I'll invite you. you. You can come in. I'm not going to push myself in. A little bit. I'm going, to, I'm going to remind you here. I'm going to remind you there. But you don't want to come. You don't want to do it. Don't do it. No, I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to take a stick and lash you to come to classes. I'm not going to get a stick and lash you to come to shul. You don't want to come to shul. You don't have to come to shul. Page six. Some shuls, you get phone calls, you get zero, people are in your case, they make you feel guilty, and so on and so forth. Yeah. According to this, we can explain. Now, let's go back to the beginning of our study. In the beginning of our study, what did we say? What was the problem? The problem was, They enjoyed the feast of that man. Of Achashverosh. And that it says, Garam Lekzerat Kliya. And according to the Tadamid of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, it says, that's what caused the decree for all the Jews to die. Ki eino begeder onesh al chet. Until now, we thought it was a punishment. It's not a punishment. It's a consequence. Ela shezo ita totsa'a tiv'it me'anhagatam. This was a natural condition from the behavior. And you're going to say, what about all the other people? Same thing. That was the nature of the people. They say, right now, we're good. We're in America. America protects the Jews. America is nice to the Jews. Nothing is going to happen to us. We can rely on American government to make sure everything is good. That's where the problem starts. The problem starts when we rely on Trump, when we rely on Biden, when we rely on the UN, when we rely on something, we rely on something else. It doesn't matter. In other words, think about what happened at that time. It was America. Persia was America. Jews was, um, they became slaves. And all of, it, all of a sudden in Persia, after 70 years, they became the top of the top. The biggest advisors of the king were Jews. The biggest merchants were Jews. The biggest things everywhere were Jews. Jews, 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 Jews. Jews were all over the empire. Gaining money, gaining fame, gaining power. Ma'amadamu matzava mativi shemnei Yisrael lachar shegidel ha-melech et haman ve'inaseh lomar kol asorim. So after the king of Hashverosh took haman and he put him second in command, haya bedumel lekivsa ha-omedet ben shivim zevim. The Jews should have realized there's a problem over here. I'm showing God. Mordechai was, uh, Daniel was uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, guy. He was his main advisor. All of a sudden, 10, 20 years later, Haman becomes the guy. It's a message to the Jews. Guys, shape up. Something is happening. Do you want me involved? Do you want me involved or you don't want me involved? Do you want me to come in or you don't want? And what do they say? 
we're good. We're good. Mordechai is still in power. We're going to become, you know, like if you learn about, you know, the Dreyfus affair in France, there was this gentleman called Dreyfus. Did you ever hear about Dreyfus affair? So the, the Dreyfus, yeah, that's right. So Dreyfus decided if I'm going to assimilate, the reason that there's anti-Semitism is because Jews are to themselves, they don't assimilate. So then he assimilated completely, he became a Frenchman, gave away all his French, all his Jewish identity pretty much. And nevertheless, when somebody needed a scapegoat to blame somebody, who did they blame? Dreyfus, he was the scapegoat. In other words, you can and this is what the Jews did. It says, we're going to become, assimilate, we're going to become just like the other nations. It says, we're going to enjoy the feast. What does it mean, enjoy the feast? We, have, we still have a problem here. Enjoy the feast means come to the feast and think that the feast is the one that gives us sustenance. We get it from a and, you know, the relationship, diplomacy. Oh, but you're going to see. The, the diplomacy, though, is important. Yeah, I'm a modern modern, modern, modern. You can't be a primitive. We have to go there. Have and they were right. And they were right. And they were yeah. right. And Mordechai was there because of that. You have to go to Washington. You have to talk to Trump. You have to talk to Biden. You can enjoy it. Oh, very good. Exactly. That was the scene. The sin wasn't that they went. The sin was that they enjoyed. That's the sin. Very good. You have to. You have to be a politician. You have to play the game. You cannot tell a king, go, go get lost. You have to respect the king. You have to play the game. Don't enjoy the game. Shalela et ha-shmira nisit shel gadol ha-roe. כי העובדה שבני ישראל נהנו מזה, the Jewish people enjoyed, what did they enjoy? We have a connection with Achashverosh. Look how great we are. Oh, Trump invites us over to the White House. Biden invites us over to the White House. Look at us. We're on the top. Nobody is better than... They enjoy. It was uplifted. They were. We are safe. We have a protector. Who is our protector? Achashverosh. That's it. He's the, going, the big bad wolf. He's the one who's going to protect us from all the small wolves. That was the idea. This was the proof. You remember in paragraph Aleph? There's no chashivus in them. No, it's like it doesn't exist. Lo nechshav. Exactly. You show that it was important for you. That this is something. It has an effect. Ad kedekach until how important was the reason in their eyes? She shtatvutam besudoto ita nechshavet etam lekavod hashenu mize that they got their ego uplifted in the fact that they got invited to the White House. They put it up there on the wall so everybody can see. Look, I got invited to King Achashverosh's feast. Vehi shtatvutam besuda lo haita hechrichit. And their, enjoy, and their joining the feast wasn't necessary. Because some say they had to go. You, have to, you cannot disrespect the king. In other words, it's true that they had to go. You have to go to the But that's not why they went. Why did they go? They went because of the enjoyment. Not because they have to go. If they would have went because they have to go, that's one thing. But they didn't go because they have to go. They want... Why did Esther go to Achashverosh? Because she was forced to go. She didn't enjoy it. They wanted to go to Achashverosh. That was the problem. They enjoyed the whole, the whole spiel. They enjoyed the whole thing. Now they felt their ego is up. So look what happens now. Usually, God is protecting us because we know, God, please be over here, protect me. So anything that, look, this guy is hungry. This wolf goes, grrr, God, 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 please, look, he's going, grrr. So God immediately comes, he, takes to, he goes to the wolf, go away, right? That's what he says. But all of a sudden, we tell God, God, God we're okay. You see the big bad wolf over there? He, he's going to kill the other guy if he's going to go against us. So God say, you don't want me, you sure? So no, 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 don't get involved, please. Like, we do it with business. 
Everything is going fine. Everything is lining up. Don't say punishment. Huh? Don't say the word punishment. Oh, very good. Very good. They relied on the wolf, on the big bad wolf to protect them from the other wolves. In other words, they thought that the 70 wolves are actually have chashivas. Nature has an importance. And they enjoyed the power that they received from that evil person. They said to God, God, we're good. We've got a shepherd over here. We don't need you. Don't get involved. Everything is going fine. We're good. And they put themselves under the auspices of Paro, of Achashverosh. Okay? So they said, nature, you rule us now. And when the wolf is the one who's protecting the sheep, what's going to happen? He's going to be the first one who's going to go eat it. Okay. So let's see. What should, have done, what should the Jews have done? בני ישראל הנמצאים בגלות תחת שיטת האומות צריכים לתת כבוד למלכות. It's true, you need to show respect. You cannot just say, I don't care about you. You need to show respect to the king. ודינה מלכות הדינה. It says, the laws of the country is your laws. You have to show respect to the laws of the country. ודרשו את שלום העיר, like it says, if you live in America, you pray for America. And if America is fighting against, doesn't matter what, if you live in Russia and you're a Jew, what do you do? You pray that Putin will win the war. That's a Jewish halacha. You live in Ukraine. What do you do? You pray that Zolinsky is going to win the war. That's what you do. That's where you live. That's your citizen of that country. Going to Jewish law. You have to daven for that nation. And when Achash Rosh called all the Jews to come, they couldn't say, hey, forget about you. They needed to come. כפשוט, כרצון איש דה מרדכי, באופן המותר, בדי תוקם, and obviously eat the kosher food, not like some of them did. Some of them ate non-kosher, you had to eat kosher food, like מרדכי, like the food that מרדכי took care of. אבל ביחד עם זה, but nevertheless, at the same time, there needs to be a recognition. That what? הרגשה והכרה ברורה, they had to know in other words, you have to go to the king. You have to go to work. You have to work hard. You have to do everything. But that's not what is the that's not what you rely on. That's that that, that is lo chashuv. En leze chashivut. Yeah, what's the chashivut? Why is it chashuv? Why is it important? Because God said to do it. But it's not the protection comes from God, not from nature. או אף על פי שהיה מולך בכיפה כי אם אך ורק בידי הקדוש ברוך הוא In other words, it's only God who's running the show There's nothing else Everything is a custom The whole thing is a one big custom One big poem All this nature is a custom of God It's God dressing up This is what it is It's God, you see it's right It's exactly פרק כ"א It's Godliness dressing up ועוד זאת, and furthermore שקיומם של בני ישראל הוא בגדר נס המלש בטבע and we know that Jewish people are all existing as a miracle ולפעמים נס גלוי and sometimes as we can see with the Jewish history it's a revealed miracle כבשה אחד בין שבעים זאבים one sheep among seventy wolves שגדול הרועה ששומר בני ישראל בהנהגה נשיא של עולם הטבע and how great is God that is protecting us constantly וזהו תוכן הפנימי so now we understand what's the we're on page eight What's the inner meaning, the deeper meaning? That what they said, that the sin of the Jewish people, was the fact that they enjoyed the feast. In other words, they should have went to the feast, but not enjoyed it. It wasn't because they needed, God said, you have to show respect to the king. That's not, that's not what they, they, they went to the king. They gave importance, the importance, 
חשוב, את אחשוורוש עד כדי כך שטעו לחשוב שקיומם תלוי בחדו של מלך אחשוורוש. In other words, it's nature, it's a חשוורוש who's giving me, he's giving me the power. He's a חשוורוש is sustaining me. A, without America we're done. Like, like everybody says in Israel. Without America we're finished. What can we do? Who's going to give us? It's exactly this. It's exactly. היינו אדם שהוא ההפכו של קיום רצון הבורא. In other words, a person, like a חשוורוש, a רשע, somebody who cares about no one in his life, you rely on him that what? On Schumer? Yeah? Or on, uh, on Biden, on Trump? Some people they rely on Trump, by the way. Same, it's the same mistake. כך נוצרה האפשרות להשתתף בסעודתו לשם עיניו ותענוג. So this is what happened that they started enjoying their connection to nature. Okay. So now we're going to see how was this thing fixed. So we see Esther fixed the whole thing. She combined well, both. She went to work and she knew work is unimportant. What does it mean? How do we put it together? And she knew at the same time that work is not important. In other words, she gave importance to Achashverosh and she knew that the Hashverosh is nothing. You're not important, it's only God. You're not doing anything. Okay. So, so let's see, let's see, exactly. שני הקצוות אלו שמבקשים ודורשים מכל אחד ואחד מישראל. So now we're asking every Jew to act in both ways towards nature. מצד אחד אין סומכים על הנס. God says, go to work. You can't rely on nature. You can't the miracles. Go to work. If you don't go to work, you're not going to make a living. Yeah? In other words, you have to rely on nature. You have to rely on your psyche. You have to get, push, in other words, it looks like you have to push God out of the picture. In other words, you have to rely on you. You have to rely on your brain. You have to rely to do the, the internet. You have to rely on doing it the right way. On who you're relying? On yourself. On your brain. On your hard work. That's what it, God says to do that in one, in one side. ועליו לעשות פעולה בדרך הטבע דווקא, and God says you have to go to work according to nature specifically, וביחד עם זה עליו להכיר שכל הטבע שבחייו הוא רק לבוש. But you see that everything you're doing is only a custom. And that's not what the real thing is. It's only Purim. This is what Purim is. It's only, it's only a custom. וכל ענייניו באים מההנהגה הניסית ללמעלה. The truth is everything is coming from God. באו לידי ביטול בהשתדלותה של אסתר וביטול הגזירה. We're going to see how we can see exactly this behavior in the way that Esther went to Achashverosh. So let's look at source number five. When she was asked to go to the king by Mordechai, she said to Mordechai, look, כל עבדי המלך ואמינות המלך יודעים אשר כל איש ואישה שיבואו למלך אשר חצר הפנימית אשר לא יקרה אחד את עולמי. It says, look, for 30 days I wasn't called to the king already. And everybody knows, it looks like he, he's found somebody else nicer than me. That's what it looks like. And just showing up by the king, people show up by the king if he doesn't like. You know what happens? He takes your head off. So he, she told him, and I wasn't called to come to the king for the last 30 days. So it's not a good time for me to go right now. Maybe after he will remember me and he will send for me, maybe it will be a good time to go to the king. But now I'm just wasting my life. It's, going, it's going to, not going to cause anything. And uh, so Mordechai says to her, pretty much, Esther, if you're not going to do this, it's over for you. God is going to give a salvation for someone else. We don't need you. But if you want to participate in the salvation of the Jewish nation, you know, you better go. That's what he tells her. And she decides she's going to go. But before she went, she tells Mordechai to do something. And look, look what she does. Vatomer Esther la'ashiv le'mordechai. Then Esther sent reply to Mordechai. Lech knos et kol ha'yudim ha'nimtsiim b'shushan. Go gather all the Jews that are in Shushan. V'tsumu alai and fast. V'al tochlu v'al tishtu shloshet yamim. Do not eat, do not drink for three days. And we're talking about elderly and children. Everybody. Not a fast. Yom Kippur we go crazy. Imagine, three days. Three, three, three nights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not like the Ramadan, exactly. He says, <laughs> Not only me, also me and my servants are also going to do this. And that's how I'm going to enter the king. She's a prophet, right? 
Yeah. So she, this, this request for the fast really came from Hashem. Yes, but you, you have to remember. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah, you, you have to remember, we, um, prophecy is not what the prophet wants, it's what God reveals to him. God never reveals him to, to him the whole picture. He wants him to work on his own. Okay? And okay? it says, and I'm going to get lost because I'm doing something wrong going to the king. I'm going to get lost. So let's understand what's in her logic. What is she doing? Page 10. We see that she did go. She respected the king. She went to the king. She didn't say God can take care of the situation. She went and did something. But that's the first time. Wait, wait. Oh. Lo to beg of a nation. In other words, I'm going to do something. I'm going to use natural power, my connection with the king, in order to, gen, to save the Jewish nation. She, and think about it. So according to nature, what should she do? She should go do makeup. Eat, drink, right. look good. good so. Yeah. Imagine after three days of fasting how you look. You look like disaster. Yeah. You look like a disaster. So what are you doing? Either you're relying on God or you're relying on nature. Decide. What are you doing? She's playing both games. She needs to go, to go through her beauty routine when she goes into the king. And especially that she wasn't called into the king for the last 30 days. Obviously he found somebody better than her. And then, she's going to come into the inner courtyard, not according to the rule, she might get chopped with her head. So then, for sure, she would need to look good. She has to go to the spa, she has to eat good, she has to drink good, she has to do her hair, her makeup, her nails, everything. Man, not man, not man, fast. Six exactly. She, at, le at least three days. At least three days. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but nevertheless, she is fasting. She is fasting for three days. According to nature, she's not going to look that good when she's going to go in front of the king. So I don't understand her behavior. If it needs to come through nature, you know they're allowed to fast. Because you have to rely on nature. In other words, don't, you're going to go against nature now. God says to go with nature. And if you trust in God, that it's going to come from above. So says Davan, just fast. You don't need to go to the king fast. If you rely on God, just fast. You don't need both. Why are you, why are you doing both? In other words, don't endanger yourself. Just fast. God is going to save you. But now we're going to understand. According to this, in his poetry, paragraph Aleph, that also makes it even better now. Because this conduct that Esther did, that's what's going to take away the sin. The sin was what? The relying on Achashverosh to save the people. In other words, you have to do nature. But no, don't rely on nature. We have to do nature. So you know she that. Had to go the she had. God said so. Yes, it says you have to go through nature, but don't rely on nature. She neenu misudatoin. Yesoda taut she garam le. Very good. Right? Yes. Yeah, but wh which is the main one? And you don't have to go. But who, who are you relying on? You have to rely on relying on Hashem. Relying on Hashem. So, so if you're relying on Hashem, why are you going through nature? Um, because God said so. Yeah. God said to go through nature. In other words, God dressed himself in nature. He hid himself in nature. Olam means a custom. Okay. He put himself in a custom. Yesod ha-ta'ut shegaram la-ana'a mesuidoto shel oto rasha so that mistake that caused the people at the time to enjoy the feast, 
היה בכך שחשבו שכאשר נמצאים במצב שצריכים להשתדל בדרך הטבע, was they, they thought when you need to do things according to nature, אזי הממשלה היא בידי חוקי הטבע ותלויים בהם. Then nature is the boss. Once you need to do, you, nature, if you don't go to go work, you're not going to get done. In other words, nature is the boss. God is well, we pushed him away. We pushed him away. Exactly. We have to come and bring God back into the system. We have to invite him back. Because we actively push him away. He says, God, you don't get it. I'll work hard. I'll be smart. I'll make a lot of money. I don't need you. Very good. So, so you're not excellent. You're not acting like them. So that's excellent. You're not acting like them because they didn't rely on God even when it was hard. That was the problem with them. So when Esther behaved, she showed the entire world. It says the, the reason why I'm going to Achashverosh is only a garment. That's not why. It's only a garment. I don't need it. Actually, it's not needed. The only reason I'm doing it is because God told me to do it. But that's not where the salvation is going to come from. The salvation is going to come from the fast, not from the going. The going is only a garment that God told me, dress in that garment to go. It's only a garment to the salvation that comes from above. So first of all, she says, I'm going to fast. In order that the miracle is going to happen. ולמאחר שרצה הקדוש ברוך הוא שהצלה הניסית של למעלה תהיה לא חזרה דרכי הטבע. But since God wants a person not to rely on miracles, He wants it to hold it according to nature. Therefore, Mordechai, with the word of God, told her to go to Achashverosh, even though if it's dangerous, because that's what's necessary according to nature. So the garment, the going to work, the going to Achashverosh, that's not the main stuff. That's the second, it's only a custom. Because that's only the custom. What's inside the custom? The reason why God is going to save us. Because God, we want you back in our life. We need you as a shepherd. One of the teachings that we can learn, Bnei Yisrael nivra'u neshemot begufim. We were born, we were created, souls in a body. Be'ofen shumuchrachim li'itasek b'tzuchei aguf. We have to go to work. We have to take care of our bodies. U'mekevan sh'kadosh b'chu b'ram b'ofen zeh, and since God created us in a physical body, we have no way, no way out. We have to act according to nature. This is God's will. שיתעסקו בצרכי הגוף, you have to eat, you have to drink, you have to sleep. ובאו הוראה מימי הפורים, now we have to learn from the days of פורים, שאף שצריכים להתעסק בענייני הגוף, even though you have to eat, you have to drink, you have to, you have to remember these are only garments. הרי העסק צריך להיות לא באופן של הנאה. In other words, we're not here to enjoy the steaks. We didn't come into the world to enjoy the steaks, to enjoy the feast, to enjoy this. Because the truth, the money doesn't come from the amount of time we spend at work. The money comes from our connection to God. Because God is the one who gives the money. Our main job in this world, the thing that a person needs to enjoy in this world, needs to be with the soul. Where the soul is alive, where the soul gets enjoyment, learning Torah, doing mitzvahs, limud a Torah vekiyu a mitzvot, veilu itaskut biyenav agashmiim, and are busy ourselves with the physical pleasures of the world. Who rakedes sheyeh parim shalem is only for that because God commanded me to do it. I need no enjoyment. Don't enjoy the feast. Enjoy the connection with God.